I've built myself a little scene here that is essentially a single cone over here and a lot of other cones in the background here. They're just instances and they're just so that I can demonstrate something for one of my Patreon supporters, which is Serge. Hello, Serge. I hope this is going to be helpful. Serge asked me, hey, I've, I want to spot render an image sequence and I'm not entirely sure how to do it. Somebody suggested I should use an IRA mat for that, but I have no idea what that is, how to set it up or how it could be useful for spot rendering. And I said, well, I've heard about the IRA mat, but I've never really explained it. So this is, you know, this is that video that explains how to make the IRA mat do something useful and uh, how we can potentially use it for spot rendering. I don't think it's, it's a good approach. Somebody in the forum thread suggested that. So I thought I'm explaining this for search. So, um, but it'll double up as as the, this is the IRA map video. So right now, I if I switch over to the IRA viewport, let's just have a look what this looks like. It's the default HDRI image. And we can see that all my little trees cast shadows on this kind of imaginary plane at the bottom. That's just an IRA feature that I've enabled in the environment options. That's this thing here that's called draw ground. So if I switch that off, the shadows will go away. But if I switch it on, then I can see that all the shadows are drawn. That's just something to keep in mind. So that's really not what the IRA mat is all about. The IRA mat is a advanced property that we can apply to our objects and that makes it essentially invisible and can hide parts of objects. So let me go and switch this back to filament and bring myself a primitive in. I'm going to use a plane, but you can use anything you like. So you can use a box or whatnot. I'm going to use a plane here with 10 divisions. Divisions don't really matter. And the plane is uh, is white. I don't really like white. So I'm going to go and make it dark on the surfaces tab. Doesn't have to be completely black, but kind of a dark gray would be nice. And also I'm, I'm not a big fan of the shininess, the glossiness that is applied by default. So I'm going to just tone that down as well. That's under the base glossy and then glossy roughness. If we crank that up, it just gets, you know, it doesn't, doesn't shine anymore. So right now, if I were to go and render this in iRay now, we have to check this feature in iRay. I don't really see anything special about it. The plane, if I go and lift it up, will cast its own shadow as it intersects with my cone. But other than that, I can see that it now casts a shadow on the imaginary ground plane. And the little cone that's sticking out kind of casts the shadow onto my, my plane. So watch what happens now as I go and enter my content library and find myself the scripts folder. So this is here my DAS 3D library. If I go and scroll down, I find my scripts folder. And in the scripts folder, there's a utilities folder. And in the utilities folder, there's several bits and pieces. One of them is this thing here, the create advanced IRA node properties. So that's something that comes with DAS Studio. It's kind of, you know, it's built in and all we can, all we need to do really with it is apply it to an object that we want to give these advanced IRA properties to. And that will then create the IRA mat option that we need. So if you double click that, you don't see anything happening in the viewport right now. But with my object selected, I can now go ahead onto the parameters tab and head over to display and there it is so under display in rendering there's a new tab called iray and that's where i find my iray mat and it's off at the moment because i can also give it a handle i don't actually know what that is but you know we don't luckily we don't need it if i go and switch this on now we see nothing happening in the viewport and that's because this effect is applied to the object uh, kind of for, for let's just say to, for it to show up i need to switch this out of the iray viewport and then i need to switch it back on to the iray viewport that's kind of important otherwise the effect isn't visible so now i can see that my plane has a different color. In fact, it's invisible and it hides anything that's underneath it. So that's kind of the takeaway of it. It hides whatever's underneath it. It mats it off like in Hollywood filmmaking terms. Whatever was underneath my little cone is still there as I look on it uh, on the side. But if I look through the mat, through the IRA mat or through the object that now has these advanced IRA properties, things behind it will be hidden. And that can be of use if you want to hide 
parts of your object that would otherwise be interfering. So I, I've watched a video by Mac4D and he's built a nice little scene with it in which he has zombies kind of crawling out of a broken up piece of you know earth. And that's kind of nice. So the, the objects were kind of lying flat on the surface, but he kind of hides it cleverly with objects. So as if it appears, these guys are crawling out of a gash in the street, which isn't actually there. So that's how you can use it. So the, yeah, the takeaway is the iron mat hides whatever's underneath it. So if I go and make this larger now and go and cut some other parts of my, uh, of my objects off here, I can just go and slide that in and some things will just appear to cut off here. So it only, it, you can only see it when it's in, when it's enabled in Iris. So look, some of these, some of these cones are now uh, essentially when I'm looking through it, some of these bottoms of these cones, I can't see. Whereas here, this thing, I can still see. The, the moment I make the plane invisible, all these bottoms will come back. And now as it's there, it, all these bottoms are kind of cut off. So it's a visual effects trick. It's kind of related to the IRA section plane node, which also hides parts, but as it does so, it will change the lighting of that. So that's kind of how you use it. If you can find uses for it, great. Serge was asking me, can I use it to spot render things in my image sequences if I only have changed a small part of it and I have, you know, I have something that uh, that I want to re-render. I don't want to re-render the whole scene. I just want to spot render that part of multiple images in the sequence. And I don't really know if it's going to be useful, but I'll, I'll show you anyway how, uh, how this works or how this could work potentially. I've tested the render times. They are not faster if you mat something off. So the, the other thing that you can do with this IRAM mat, and this is kind of why I'm, uh, why I'm showing this. Let me go bring this back to uh, this scale here. You don't have to use the whole object. You can use part of the object. So if I were to go and grab my uh, geometry editor and bring this into wire texture shaded, I can go and select a few polygons here and then just go and remove them. So I can make the uh, geometry visibility, I can hide the selected polygons and then I have a hole in my IRA section plane. And then of course, the anything that's in the hole will, uh, you can still look through it and only the pieces that are, uh, that are, that don't have the hole, they won't appear. So if I do this now, as you would imagine, I can literally look through the plane, but everything that is visible will still act as a mat and anything that isn't visible will not act as a mat. So for Serge's thing about the spot rendering, that means if I had a camera that were to look at my, at my scene like so, say I'll make myself a camera out of that, create new camera with the perspective view, perfect. And then if I were to go and take my mat and move that so that it's kind of in front of the camera something like uh wasn't there a rotational thing here like like there and you know if you were to if you were clever you had created the camera probably slightly differently <laughs> not like not like me <laughs> but just as a as an example my tool settings should probably be the local coordinates. There we go. That might make my life a little easier. Yeah, so I wonder what happens if I go and look through my camera or look through two viewports now, maybe top and bottom. If I use this as whatever the camera sees. I might also go and change my render settings to 16 by 9. So as if this was a, you know, that's, that's, that's this was this. So this is what my camera sees. If I go and bring this a little bit closer still to the camera, that the that the section node only shows, oh, sorry, the section node, the, the iron mat only shows a small part, then you could use this as a spot render. So if you go and parent that plane now to the camera, it's kind of cool because you can use the camera and zoom in and you'll only ever see a small portion of that image. So, and as a result, if you go and render this now, you 
basically have a spot render. So that's what the forum post suggests you could do. But of course, the problem with that is that this render will take you just as much time as the render that um, that would be full size. So iRate doesn't make, it's not an actual spot render, if you know what I mean. It just, it's a, it's a post-production effect. In fact, the render with the iRay mat will take you slightly longer than the one that you use without the iRay mat because iRay has less processing to do. Anyway, that is how that works. And I thought, you know, I'll share that with you, both the iRay mat and the fact, is it useful for spot rendering? I don't think so, but do play around with it. Maybe it'll be useful. Exactly. It's another DAS secret that will be unearthed. Yes, I thought I'd share this and I hope, you know, search. I hope this makes this makes sense. Mm -hmm.